In this video, we're going to be looking at how we can change cancel culture while meeting the needs of our peers. Let's get into it. Last week, we kicked things off by talking a little bit about cancel culture and how social media can sometimes be a pretty ugly and angry place. But social media can also be a pretty wholesome and entertaining place, especially when our grandparents get involved. I love it when my grandparents and parents post weird stuff on the internet, but I wouldn't mind spending a little bit less time being their own personal tech support. One of my favorite commercials touches pretty close on this topic, so let's check that out real quick. Instead of mailing everyone my vacation photos, I'm saving a ton of time by posting them to my wall. Ooh, I like that one. It's so quick. It's just like my car insurance. I save 15% in just 15 minutes. I save more than that in half the time. I unfriend you. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Does this video remind you of anyone in your family? Does, does anyone have a family member who's a little confused about how the internet or technology works? Or have you ever had to help them solve a technology problem? I'm sure you're happy to help them, your grandparents, your aunts and uncles, or your parents figuring out that technology. First 50 or so questions, anyway. But after that, I'd understand if you started to lose your patience a little bit. It's easy to get frustrated, especially with family when someone needs help doing something that seems super easy and basic to us. I'm sure there are times you want to tell Aunt Edna to just look it up on YouTube, but then you might also have to explain how YouTube works to her. Every day we face opportunities to help others in small ways, whether it's showing your grandma how to use emojis, or helping a kid tie their shoe, or letting someone at your lunch table know that they have some of the cafeteria food stuck in their teeth, which you should do because it's really gross. Depending on the person, the need, your mood, and how busy you are, maybe you help them. Or maybe you don't. Everyone is helpful and generous sometimes, but what about the times we'd rather not be helpful? When we're too busy, or we're annoyed, or we're tired, or we're sure that someone else will help if we don't. Every day we're surrounded by people who need help with things that are a lot more serious than figuring out how to post a picture on Facebook or too. I'm reminded of a time during college when we took a trip, a class of mine took a trip to Nashville for a convention. And as we were there, the students all got invited to this special event a couple of blocks away from the convention center. So we all went, we had free lunch there. We talked about certain stuff. We talked about our training and our classes and everything. And as we were leaving, a couple of us had brought some extra food with us, food that was left over from lunch. And as we were walking down these streets of Nashville on our way back to the hotel, we passed a group of men on the sidewalk, and we were talking on our sidewalks, so we didn't really notice them a whole lot. And as we passed them, we got probably another 30 or 40 feet, and one of my friends, Paul, looked at John and said, John, did you hear him? I think he was calling, calling out for you. And as he said that, John was throwing away a little bit of leftovers from his meal. And as we stopped and we were like, wait, what just happened? We realized that the men that we passed were homeless and that they had been asking John if he was going to finish his food. And so we were suddenly struck by this feeling of how did we miss this? We're, we're all people that want to go into ministry. How did we miss this, these people right in front of us? How did we miss this opportunity to share Jesus' light with people? Now, as I shared that story, I don't know what you were thinking or felt when you heard it, but maybe you thought about a time when you failed to help someone in need. Or maybe you remembered a time when you needed help, but no one was there for you. Maybe you thought of both. When we're in need, we're at our most vulnerable. But unfortunately, we don't always respond with compassion, care, or concern when we see someone else in need. Instead, we respond with impatience, discomfort, disgust, suspicion, or just plain apathy. The reality is that sometimes we'll be the ones who are able to help, and sometimes we'll be the ones in need. Knowing that, wouldn't you like to live in a world where we were all cared for each other when we were at our most vulnerable? I know I would. I believe that kind of world is possible and that Jesus is challenging us and inviting us to go and create it. In the Gospels, which are the four books that tell the story of the New Testament and the story of Jesus' life, we find examples of Jesus meeting the needs of most vulnerable people. Jesus' days were often interrupted by people's cries for help, like the time a blind man named Bartimaeus shouted at him while he walked down the road. 
It's found in Mark 10, verses 46 through 52, and it says, Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man named Bartimaeus, which means the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. And throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Bartimaeus pleaded for help, but was told by the crowds to be quiet. They couldn't be bothered. To them, he was just another be beggar, not worthy of their help or attention. But to Jesus, Bartimaeus was worthy of his time, his attention, and his help. On another day, Jesus was busy again. He was on his way to save the life of a dying girl when he was interrupted by someone who needed his help. This story is found in Luke chapter 8, verses 40 through 48. Now, when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, and they were all expecting him. Then a man named Jairus, a synagogue leader, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house, because his only daughter, a girl of about twelve, was dying. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him, and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Because of her gender and her illness, this woman would not have been seen as someone worthy of Jesus' time or attention. She most likely believed this too. That's why she didn't try to speak to Jesus, but simply reached out to touch the edge of his robe instead. After all, Jesus was an important man, and she wasn't. But to Jesus, she was worthy of his time, his attention, and his help. He spoke to her, called her his daughter, and met her needs with love. Toward the end of his ministry, Jesus told us a parable that really touches on meeting the needs of others. I want to paraphrase it, and if you want to read the rest of it, it's found in Matthew chapter 25, 31 through 46. But in part of it, he says, when I was in need, when I was hungry, when I was thirsty, when I was homeless, when I was in jail, when I was sick, when I was all of these things that put me in need, you took care of me, you fed me, you gave me clothes, you visited me, you brought me medicine, you took care of me. And to the people that, and he says that the people that he says this to will respond and say, when did we do any of this? When did we see you hungry? When did we see you in need? And I love Jesus' response to this. He says, whatever you did to the least of these, these people who were in need, you did to me. And I love the imagery of that because it really shows you how much Jesus cares, how much he loves us, how much he is with us in whatever we're going through. He says, whatever you did to the least of these, you did to me. Whatever you did or didn't do, you did or didn't do to me. And I love that because it illustrates so clearly how we should go about helping people, how we should go about meeting the needs of those around us. Because how would we do it if Jesus was here? Would we do what is a really tempting thing to do and say, well, these people need help. We're the only ones that can help them because we clearly are better than them. Would we do that for Jesus? 
we would say, well, these people, they're in need, but it's their fault. They clearly have made some choice. They've clearly done something that led them to where they are now. Would we say that about Jesus? Or sometimes we just somehow miss the fact that they're even there. We just totally ignore that they exist. But do we, should we do that with Jesus? Would we do that if it was Jesus standing before us in need? That's what he tells us to look at it as. As though all of these people, everyone that we see who is in need, which, a quick hint, everybody you meet has a need for something. It might not be a physical need. It might not be food or water or shelter. But they need something. They need someone to care for them. They need someone to care about them. They need someone to listen to them. They need someone there for them. And Jesus says, whatever you do for that person, you do to me. You do to him. Through his example and teachings, Jesus consistently cared for people who had been canceled, forgotten, disrespected, and ignored because of their needs. And now he challenges us to do the same to love people who are in need, as if they were him. When we study the actions and the teachings of Jesus, there are a few things that we can learn about how to meet the needs of others and how not to. First off, it's not only about our actions, it's about our hearts. Jesus doesn't challenge us to only act concerned about others or to put on a show of meeting people's needs. He says, do this whether people see it or not. Don't do it because people are seeing it. Don't do it because people aren't seeing it. Do it because it's in your heart and in your mind to care for others. It's not only about loving others. It's about loving God. Jesus challenges us to love each other well, but he's letting us in on a secret. When we love others by meeting their needs, we show our love for Jesus. Every time we care someone who is, for someone who is vulnerable, it's a gift of God and worship to God. It's not about what we have, it's about what we can give. As we've talked about meeting the needs of others, maybe you thought, I can't help anyone. My family doesn't have a lot of money. I don't have a lot of time to give. But Jesus wasn't talking about only wealthy or important people in this parable. He was talking about ordinary people like you and me. No matter what you have, whether it's time, compassion, money, friendship, or some skills, Jesus says we can use it for God's purposes and the kingdom so that we can give sacrificially, passionately, and willingly. And finally, it's not about them. It's about us. It's not about the people that are separate from us because we're all together. Sometimes when we talk about meeting others' needs, we talk as though we're all the people with all the power, the resources, or stuff to share, while people in need are a separate group of people. When we think this way, it's easy to see someone as if they're less valuable than we are, even while we're serving them. But do you remember the way that Jesus spoke to the blind man and the sick woman who needed his help? He treated them not just with compassion, but with respect. He made the crowds pay attention to them. Instead of speaking for them, he asked them to speak for themselves. Jesus didn't just give people charity. He gave people respect. He gave them a voice. And we can do that too when we remember that it's not about us and the people who need us. There's only us, everyone. We're all equally loved, seen, and valued by God. In Jesus' time, people in need were often canceled by society instead of helped. They were ignored, judged, or left to fend for themselves. And I feel like we still have that problem today, right? But if you wanna love like Jesus loves, and I really hope that you do, love people who are in need. When you do, it's like you're doing it for Jesus himself. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that you meet all of our needs, that you are the great provider, that you care for all of us, that you love all of us equally. Help us to stop canceling those who are in need, to, to see these people who might be in need, who might, it might be easy for us to say, well, you're lesser than me because you need something. Help us to remember that we all need something. Help us to remember that in your eyes, we are all on equal footing. And help us to meet the needs of other people. 
And not just to meet their needs, but to meet them in love, to meet them with respect, to meet them and show that not only do we have the resources to help them, but we care enough about them to treat them as human beings. Help us when it gets difficult to remember that. Help us to remember that just because someone is in need doesn't mean that they're separate from us, that they're lesser than us. All of us are equal. Help us to remember that. Amen.